I'm okay. Okay, so today, you have the pleasure of having me talk to you about law and grace and contrasting the both of them, okay? And of all things that pastor could have asked me to do, that was not one of them. Because <laughs> I, if you would have asked me about praise and worship, I would have been, yeah, I'm on there, I'm on board. But sometimes the Lord stretches our tents and trust me, I'm being stretched beyond my imagination. <laughs> Not only that, you know, I, we've been under uh, this, you know, uh, half of me is like, Pastor asked me, and I'm like, I should have said no. I should have said no. Because I had so much to get done. Because as you all well know, I was sick early in the month, so I had a lot of work to do, and I had paperwork to do. Stayed home all day yesterday trying to do the paperwork. In the meantime, trying to do the scriptures, trying to, you know. But you know something, the way I look at it is God gives us what we need in order to get the job done. So, I hope and pray that it's good. <laughs> so, let's, let's bite in. We're going to look at Exodus chapter 32, verses 26 through 28. And I don't know what happened here, but okay. Close that. Okay. So, so, he stood at the entrance to the camp and said, Whoever is for the Lord, come to me. And all the Levites rallied to him. Next. Then he said to them, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, each man strap a sword to his side, go back and forth through the camp from one end to the other, each killing his brother and friend and neighbor. The Levites did as Moses commanded, and that day about 3,000 of the people died. Now. When, when you go to the beginning of Exodus, um, Moses was up and down the mountain talking with God, trying to get the people together, you know, trying to, he, he was pleading for the people because the people were a mess. And in those days, prior to, to Moses going up to the mountain, um, the, law, the law had not, well, had been orally given to them, Okay. But they knew what the law was, and they said, we can do it. We, Pastor, Pastor Billy has preached on that. He said, we could do this. But in reality, they had no way. They couldn't do it. They couldn't do it, okay? But prior to, uh, to, to them getting to that place where Moses was, have, God was writing out the tablets and giving them the commandments, the law, there was no law. There was sin, but there was no punishment for the sin, Okay? So you could sin, the sin was sin, and you would reap the consequences, okay? But there was no law in place to say, if you did this, this was going to happen to you, okay? And I likened it to, are you ready for this one? If you go to Amsterdam, okay, you could smoke marijuana, okay? And it's legal. You could smoke marijuana, you could hang out, and whatever consequences comes with that, which is craziness, or whatever marijuana does to you in that shape, form, and fashion, you know, you reap that, but there's no punishment in the law. So if you go to Amsterdam on vacation and you smoke your head off and you decide, because you lost your mind, to put some of that pot in your bag and bring it to the United States, when you get to the United States, you're gonna not only reap the punishment, but you're gonna be arrested for carrying drugs over country lines, okay? So that's, that's the way the law works. Not only do you receive the punishment of whatever the consequences of your actions, but you also reap the law of the land, whatever that law is. And you know, most of you may think, why is she using marijuana? Because that's, you know, that's what's happening in the world today. And we have to look at the world the way it works. Okay? I have young kids that I work with that, you know, I, I, I play with them. I'm like, what's the matter with you? You would smoke a hookah today? What's your problem? You know, and this is, this is our reality. This is what we deal with on a regular basis. So I often tell my kids, you realize that there is a consequence to what you're doing. Okay? N n just a natural consequence, but also if you're caught by a policeman, there's another consequence. And then you're going to ruin your life for what? Okay. So, when Moses um, 
came down, the people said, yeah, we're going to do this. We're doing that. And there were two types of people. There were the people that said, we're going to do it. And there were the people that were stiff-necked that said, you know something? I think I like doing the golden calf instead. Okay? So the 3,000 people that died were those people that said, you know something? I don't care what you, what you do. I don't care. I'm going to do what I do, and God's going to bless me anyway. Because he had blessed them all, all the time before. But they didn't realize that once they were under the law, that was it. Punishments were coming, and that is why 3,000 people died that day. Now, we go to the New Testament, okay? Acts verse 2, verse 41, right. Now here, the, the disciples were going to, um, they were praying, and they were, they were preaching Jesus, and... Um, here, those people, those who accepted his message, were baptized. And about 3,000 were added to their number that day. Okay. In this part here, Jesus had died for our sins. Okay. He took on all, our, all of our transgressions, everything, so that when God looked at us, he sees us through Jesus. Okay. So in that day, when those people said, you know something? I'm going to accept him. I'm going to accept him as my savior. It added 3,000. So on one hand, we had the law, which brought death. And on the other hand, we have grace, which brought life. Okay? And, and in life, as I tell all my kids and all my people that I deal with, we make choices, we make decisions every day, whether to follow God or do what he would do. And it's not easy. I'm not saying that it's easy. It's not a piece of cake. Because, you know, every day we're tempted. Every day. You know, and I have kids that are constantly telling me, oh, I have, I have these thoughts. I have these thoughts. And I say to them, look, a lot of them have accepted Christ. I say, have you accepted Christ? Yes. Do you believe you're going to go to heaven? Yes. So guess what? God's in you. You have power to say, no, I'm not going to do that. No, this is not going to happen in my life. You can say no. There's always no, okay? So the, so the difference is the people in, in the Exodus, they chose to live their lives, and those people that changed their ways said, okay, Moses, we're going to follow. Those people followed the law, and they were given life, okay? And the people that didn't, they died. They were killed, 3,000. And then here we go. In New Testament, Acts, those people who accepted Christ and said, you know something, you know, it, it, this makes sense. Let me, let, me, let me do it. You know, he died for my sins. You know, God's going to look at me as a new creation. The old man is dead. I'm, so they received God's grace and they received life. Okay? So with that, um, so... I, I'll give you a, a little part of my testimony in the sense of how this all works out. When I first accepted Christ, I was, um, I was like overwhelmed, you know, because I used to, Sonia and I, when we first moved here, we used to go dancing, we used to do all these things, you know, we, you know, we did it, we did a little bit of everything. But I, when I accepted Christ, I was like, oh no, what am I going to do with myself now, you know? Can I dance? Can I have fun? Can I, you know what I'm saying? Like, can I go to the movies? Can I see horror movies? You know, the first thing the Lord took from me when I first accepted Lord was I no longer had a desire to see horror movies. And, and, and you may think that's like an inconsequential thing, but for me, that was a big thing. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, because I, you know, yeah, I, did, I drank and I did, but I didn't have all that other stuff. You know, I, I went through stages. And I remember accepting the Lord and that whole week being stressed because I was like, oh, no. What am I going to do? Because at that point, my mindset was in the law. I was in the law. Oh, no, God's going to punish me. Oh, no, God's going to, you know, you know how people say, oh, you know I'm going to hell because I did that. You know, but yet they forget that when they accept Christ, God sees Christ through you, you know, through us, and he doesn't see us. He sees Christ shed blood shed on the cross. So I went to a, a women's meeting, a women's aglow, and, the, and uh, the, 
I went up for prayer. I don't know why I went up for prayer, but I went up for prayer. And the, the pastor, Pastor Penny, I remember, <laughs> she's, she's like a blessing to me. She looked at me, she goes, relax. God's got you. You don't have to do anything. You just have to let him love you. And I was like, it was like a 25-pound weight came off my shoulders. I was like, thank you, Jesus. You know, because at that point, I knew that I was accepted as I was because I had accepted Jesus into my heart. So I ask you today, do you want to walk around stressed, worrying about whether you broke the fifth commandment? Well, the fifth commandment is not a good one. The sixth commandment, the seventh commandment, the eighth commandment, the ninth commandment, you know, whatever commandment it is, you know? Or do you want to walk in the grace of Jesus Christ who died on the cross for your sins and, and gave his life for you? And, and because you accept him, you can live freely under his grace. No, we're not going to go ahead and do just whatever we want, but the conviction in your heart to know that Christ died for you and that you got to do better is greater than living under these 10 little commandments. Well, they're not little. You know, this 10 commandments or whatever command. Well, what was it, 619 laws? If we go back all the way, you know. And the thing is, at, at 60 years old, I've come to the conclusion that I need to read my Bible more. 